Some say he will be the next nail in the European Union's coffin. Dutch politician Heert Wilders' anti-EU, anti-immigration party for freedom is on track to win national elections in March. But he told us why a victory still might not make him the next prime minister. He also calls his conviction on a hate speech charge for saying there are too many Moroccans in the Netherlands ridiculous. He still lives under 24-hour police protection from death threats. And whatever you do, don't call him the Dutch Donald Trump. Heert Wilders emerged from his trial more defiant and more popular than ever. And he granted this exclusive interview to CBN News. After your recent trial for hate speech, you didn't sound very repentant, very sorry. No, I'm not, you know. Um, how can I be? Um, I really said nothing wrong. And in the uh, crazy Dutch jurisprudence, it's not even our law. I think I'm the first Dutchman who is convicted for something that is not in the law because the judge decided that Moroccans, which, as you know, is a nationality, has to be seen as a race. Dale, the reason I said it was because 80% of the Dutch jihadis who go to fight in Syria are Moroccans, 80%. They are 22 times overrepresented in criminal offenses when it comes to street crime. 60% of the Moroccan youth under the age of 23 has been arrested at least once. So um, in any poll, it proved that the majority of the Dutch people agreed with me about the Moroccans. And the judge said, because of international jurisprudence, once again, not even in the Dutch law, that Moroccans had to be seen as a race. So if you, in Holland, be careful, tomorrow say that you don't like French, German, or Swedish uh, food or people, you could be called um, a racist. Of course, this is ridiculous. Um, I did nothing wrong, and that's why I um, will appeal this crazy verdict. Why do you think you've become so popular in the Netherlands? Well, you know, because um, um, like with, um, I'm, I'm not comparing myself with Donald Trump or anybody else, but, you know, the people are fed up with uh, politicians ignoring the problems. The people are fed up by if they say something about the influx of the mass immigration from uh, mostly Islamic countries, what they really feel as a threat, what really is a threat, they are being called racist if they make a remark about, hey, this is not our country anymore. Those are common people. People who also want that refugees have to have safe shelter, but believe that why not if people come from Syria and need safe shelter, why not go to find shelter in these rich Gulf states like Kuwait or Qatar or Saudi Arabia, where they have the same religion or ideology, the same language, the same climate, and billions of dollars um, to spend. Um, so people want to have people to have a safe refugee, but not coming here. And don't uh, forget, and people are very angry about that, that most of the people who came to Holland were younger people, often young men, who crossed before coming to Holland six or seven safe countries in order to be in Holland. If they just wanted to be safe, they would have stopped at Turkey, or maybe if you find Turkey unsafe, in Greece. The fact that they travel through six other countries, like former Yugoslavia, Macedonia, Hungary, Austria, Switzerland, France, Germany, Holland, is because they like our social benefits. They like our welfare state. They know which country to pick. They are not going to stay in, in Hungary or in Estonia. They come to Germany, um, to Holland, and people sense that those are not the real refugees. And our government has spent billions of euros to them, you know? And the Dutch people know they have had in the last few years enormous tough austerity measures. Pensions were cut. The public health services for elderly people were cut. Enormous um, asocial tough measures. And at the same time, people saw, while the government had this enormous austerity measures, that the, the, the government spent, spent billions of euros um, to asylum seekers who really were not asylum seekers, but migrants looking for a better life. And once again, Dale, I don't even, even blame the people for trying to have a better life here. I blame our government to allow it to happen, to not say enough is enough, you are not a refugee, and we have to defend um, um, our own country and then close our borders. A country without a border, like Holland, because we are a part of the Schengen Treaty, we are not allowed to control our own border, 
a country without a border is like a person and a house without a front door. Anybody can enter and you cannot ask anybody to leave. So it's not a real country at all. And we have to get it back and people sense that that is what they want. There are many similarities between you and Mr. Trump. A few. You outsiders bashed by the media. Yeah. You've changed the political discussion in the Netherlands. Yes, I hope. And you're strong-willed. I'm, ve I'm, I'm, I'm very strong-willed and I'm very impatient uh, as well. And I threaten a lot and <laughs> some of the ideas are, might be the same. Unfortunately, we don't have a two-party system. And like you said before, I hope to win and become prime minister, but I could win and not become prime minister because of our system. Um, you can win the elections and still lose if nobody wants to work with you. And the people, most of the parties um, are saying now that they would not want to work with me. But hey, as Mr. Trump says, there are many differences perhaps as well. I'm not the Dutch. One of your colleagues, I believe it was from Fox or CNN, asked me, you are the Dutch Trump. I said, no, I'm the Dutch Geert Wilders. Mr. Trump is Mr. Trump, I'm Mr. Wilders. I'm not anybody's copy or whatsoever. But I believe indeed, uh, as Mr. Trump said, that despite some differences, we have a lot in common and it's a kind of movement. It is a kind of movement as he calls it. It's also in Europe, we are not Trump's movement, Trump is not our movement, but the people um, are wakening up. This patriotic revolution where people want to find their own identity and are not racist all, but, but want, to, want to fight for the preservation of their own people, their own country, their own values, their own money, their own borders. This is such a positive thing. What do you hope is the future of the European Union? I'm, I'm, a, I'm against the European Union, as I told you, but I'm, I'm very much in favor of Europe. Europe is my home. Europe is my continent. Europe is where we live. The European Union is a political bureaucratic organization that took away our identity and our national sovereignty. So I want to get rid of the European Union and, and be a nation state again. Both the Eurozone and the European Union is like the, uh, the end of the Roman Empire. It's already started. It, it, in a few years' time, it will not be there anymore. Don't ask me whether it will be two years or ten years, but it, it, the end um, is near, um, and like the Roman Empire. It's gone. We need to have an exit, like Brexit, an exit, and leave the European Union. That's, that's inevitable. When I last interviewed you, it was 10 years that you had been in police protection. Now it's, what, 12, 12 and a half? Yes, how's, 12 and a half, yeah. How's, How's it going <laughs> yes. with your semi-free life? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know it's, it's, um, it's, it's, I'm very ambivalent on it. I'm very thankful to live in a country where the government provides my protection. Many police and armored cars and safe houses and things like that. And it's, it's, it's a terrible thing, really. I don't wish it. Um, uh, it's the same answer I gave you last time. I don't wish it for my worst enemy to experience. But I know what I'm doing it for whether I succeed or fail, it's my mission. It's my mission for freedom, because I want our people and our country to stay free. It's a sad thing that I lost my own freedom in the process, but if I don't succeed, many more people will lose their freedom. Excellent, thank you. It's my pleasure.